In your top story at this hour, it left unresolved. The issues plowing the party could destroy uh, the ANC in the Western Cape, a resounding warning issued by the regional leaders in an emergency press conference in Cape Town. The representatives uh, from five of the six uh, uh, Western Cape regions blame Derek Anakul and uh, Faiz Jacobs uh, for party's plight. Nasipi Sami reports. In the running up to the policy conference this week, ANC structures are scrambling for unity and the split is wide open in the Western Cape ANC. We've got weak leadership in the Western Cape. Very, very weak leadership. You yourselves know that uh, we don't have a chairperson of the ANC in the Western Cape. Is Kaya Makata, is uh, Faiz Jacobs, is Tandi Magivana, is Morencia Kilion. We told them that we are expecting them to lead us, but instead of leading us, they are dividing us. The allegations of manipulation by vested interest stem after an intriguing 2 a.m. meeting. A few group of people organized by the provincial secretary. Firstly, they went to touch and drank in touch, and after that, they convened a meeting 2 a.m. Whilst we are sleeping, people are, are, are continuing with the meeting. In the morning at 2 o'clock, when we were sleeping, we received via WhatsApp. Not everybody is in the WhatsApp group. How, how do you run an organization through a WhatsApp group? Unhappy with the move. The regional leaders claim the PEC was making unilateral decisions without consulting the regions and branches. The NEC and leadership under convener Terry is not directing us or leading us in that process of stabilizing, uniting this PEC. It's part of a problem and we call on the NEC to get the rid of Comrade Derek from this province. Faiz Jacobs is manipulated by Mostad uh, Chesley, you know. He's also in his payroll in terms of topping up his salary so that he can pursue and then divide the provincial executive committee in the manner in which he's accorded to. On the radar, ANC Provincial Secretary Faiz Jacobs said the allegations made by members were unfounded. He termed the dissenting members disruptive destructive and divisive, but the man formerly at the helm of party affairs in the province disagrees. Comrade Hanekom is disrupting the ANC in the Western Cape for political regime change interest. There is an absence of leadership. The absence of leadership is because of the crisis that they've put onto us when mercenaries were paid to take Marius Fransman down. The disgruntled leaders now want the national leadership to intervene. For now, it seems like an uphill task ahead of the National Executive Committee. Nasi Pisame for ANN7, Cape Town. Collapsed a and now joining me in studio is Butzang Mwila, political analyst, and uh, we have also Musi Rizia Ane, South African Liberty Foundation, joining us in studio. A very warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thank you so much for your time. I will start with you, uh, Mr. Mwila. Um, the fight among the Western Cape ANC uh, leaders is out in the open, and uh, <coughs> what is the main reasons that are behind these squabbles that are taking place currently? Well, uh, good evening, uh, Lesero. Good evening to, to my colleague and the uh, NN7 viewers. Look, I, I wouldn't say it's an infighting. If you look at the history of the African National Congress, especially after 1999, every time the, the organization has to go on elective conference, uh, which will lead to the election of the new leadership of the organization for national and provincial, such issues come up, such infightings and skirmishes come up. The difference between that time and now is, at the beginning, the leadership of the ANC nationally, they handled it very well. And at the moment, we found divisions within the top leadership of the ANC. You know, uh, uh, leaders of the top six are speaking on fog tongues, so how they will not be able to can handle and manage the regions or provinces very well. That's one element. Another element is we are a maturing democracy as a country. And the ANC as the ruling party is also maturing. In the past, you had followers uh, uh, who mainly or the majority of them were just following the leadership that was becoming a de facto leadership because of the history of the liberation movement. But at the moment, people have matured politically. 
the new bonds or the bonds freeze are also within you know the spectrum of the organization people are questioning leadership people are deciding who should lead them you don't have to have liberation movement credentials to be able to lead you but the way the ANC is failing is how they handle these challenges as an evolving and developing organization and, and that's one element the other element is also you know the, the the factions within the organization have deepened so deep that even national leaders, I mean, Derek Hanukkah is in the leadership of the African National Congress, but you can see how the region or the provinces are reacting to his conduct or the manner he's handling disciplinary processes uh, within the organization. People are questioning it. But it's maturing democracy, and it's how the organization handles all these things. The ANC must decide now that they cannot continue to lead the, their branches or masses the way they did prior to 1994 or prior to 1999, actually. Because, you know, after five years of being in power, people are starting to know that there's constitution, there's rules and regulations, there's policy conferences, the policies of the ruling party or the ANC influences government. People are knowing these things now. They must just be able to have a leadership at the top level who are talking in one tongue to be able to manage the situation at grassroots level. And they are failing in doing that. Mm. And now just coming to you, Mr. Tsiane, um, the now we know that uh, there was meetings that were taking place around 2 a.m., uh, attempts to disband regions, uh, emergency press conferences. How do you see these chain of events um, in the Western Cape currently? I, I think it's important to reiterate just what Mr. Mouila has just indicated, that um, it is the nature of the ANC in general. It's, it's, it's not a strange phenomenon within the ANC. It's not that ANC is in, in a huge crisis that it cannot hold. Now, the, towards elections, it's, it, as I'm saying, it's, in, it's necessary that we reiterate this, that towards an elective conference, you'll have differences. Some of the members will even challenge the current leadership via courts. We've seen it that prior, even if you can recall, prior Bluefontaine, you had the free state branches at one particular stage challenging the handling of that uh, conference, but successfully it went through. Same will also happen here, that you would have people that are differing so much so Remember, at this current moment, one could not ignore that there is a huge difference. The differences are based on those that want radical economic transformation and those that want to hold to the status quo to remain. The ANC is divided on those lines. Now, the principal lines are there. Now, if you have an indication that out of six, five branches or five regions are having a problem, that, that says that they, they feel that the person that has been given to or assigned to Western Cape in order to have to run that unity is not doing that. Now it means there's a failure in that line. You should point a finger directly and say there's a problem with the manner in which Derek Hanakom is handling it. There's no question about it. We should not shy away from who the problem is. Now it means that Western Cape need to be given a different person assigned to it and make sure that there's unity. But above all is that you would then need to resolve the problem that is there of the former chairperson that was handled also with him being this uh, <clears throat> been chased out or rather be suspended from, from the ANC. But key factor is that the differences that are there in the ANC are based on the sole foundation now of those who want to hold the ANC or rather hold the policy of the ANC to favor the historical imbalances and those that are now seeking for radical economic transformation. Mm -hmm. That in general would be a, a decisive factor even even on the on the elective conference that is to be held even here in uh, in, in the the end of the year. Mm. Yes. And uh, Mr. Butang, uh, we know that um, uh, unity had been stressed since the beginning of this year within the ANC, um, and now currently senior delegates of the ANC have been uh, stressing that the infighting within the ANC needs to come to an end, obviously. Um, are they doing enough uh, with ending the infighting that is currently taking place in the party? I don't think they are doing enough, Lesero. And because if you look at it, it's not only in the Western Cape. You know, I have reliably learned that uh, in the past week, uh, uh, the Tswani region supposed to have been a, a general meeting collapsed as well. You know? So it's happening all over the country. So it's a clear sign that the management of these challenges within the organization is not being handled properly. And, and he is correct. The ANC is used to this. It's how they handle it now. The organization is growing. The organization is developing. And not growing only in numbers, but it is developing as an organization, maturing. That's what I want to say. Now, 
what the NEC of the ANC should do is to actually have a schedule of who is actually being seen as a problem being deployed away. He's very correct. You can't have six regions uh, uh, in a province, you know, and, and the, out of six, five of them are saying, but this person that has been declared into the province by the National uh, Executive Committee is not doing well and we are rejecting that person. They shouldn't waste time because the more they waste time in this process, they've got a threatened uh, national policy conference at the moment. And the more they waste time is there, the opposition will benefit out of this uh, internal squabbles and all that. The, the opposition will take advantage. And you must remember that most of the opposition parties, with the exception of the DA in the country, they are a breakaway from the ANC. If you look at COPE, if you look at UDM, and if you look at the EFF. So they know how it works within the organization towards an elective conference. But let us not look at personalities. One of the, the, the matters that I've noted within the, the African National Congress is historically, the people were born into the ANC. They are kids of the ANC. Their parents come from the ANC. And, and come after 1994, people saw the ANC as a wagon or, or a vehicle to enrich themselves, to get jobs and to get government contracts and so forth, and also to have you know, business contacts outside. That era is gradually coming to an end, whereby people will have to work themselves up. You don't have to be a branch leader because you are eloquent like it has happened in the past. You have to know the policies of the organization. You have to be disciplined kid of the organization. You have to know how the organization works and have the grassroots support of people within your branch or your region that will actually, you know, uh, elevate you to a position you may want to occupy in the organization. In the past, it was not like that, but it is gradually going into that point whereby uh, 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 populists are not seeing their way through in the organization, but people who work on the ground, who are in touch with the members of the organization in the ground. And one person in the ANC who does it well, actually, is the president of the ANC. You know, if you look how President Zuma operates, people make noise on social media, the so-called black middle class, the elite and the so forth. He is sitting and talking to the people on the ground who are the masses, who are the majority voters of the organization. A provincial and regional leaders of the ANC are dismally failing in doing that. But also, it is becoming evident that uh, most of the people, they are not pushing the policy position of the organization. People are not focused about the policy of the ANC. That's why you find leaders of the ANC, ministers, cabinet members, and they are actually opposing what has become a policy position of the organization. And they go to the media, they make noise. That causes factionalism. Why wouldn't a minister, a deputy president of the ANC, or a senior member of the ANC, when he's got a problem with a policy position that one of the cabinet ministers is presenting like them saying this one is position now, then an NEC member comes up, spokesperson comes up, are taking one of their, are taking one of their ministers. What do you expect members on the branch to conduct themselves in which manner if the leadership of the organization is not conducting themselves in a manner that shows unity. You can't be talking unity when you've got rallies and campaigning conferences, but what your conduct is actually against the unity in the organization. So it must start on top so that the members on the ground can see that their leaders are speaking in the same language. Even if there's two camps campaigning towards an elective conference, it's normal. It happened between uh, 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 Chris Hani and Tawon Beke at some stage. It happened between Tawon Beke and Jacob Zuma. It happened when Walter Susulu was brought in to be the SG in order to bring the forces together. So they have historically handled this matter very well because the leadership of the organization was speaking in the same language, even if they had political differences. I always tell people, I vividly recall Chris Hani. Uh, uh, rejecting the negotiated political settlement, standing up and saying, you know, the uh, Amagirela are not happy with this settlement. We are still prepared to push this thing and talk in a united voice. However, as a disciplined member of the uh, alliance, the SACP, I will listen to what the leadership say and follow. That was a leader who was against what was being done by the disciplined cater of the organization and who stood up and said, I don't agree with this, but the majority of the people, they want to embark on this path. Now, talking on that point with discipline, I just want to bring in Mr. Ziani uh, over here. Now, could criminalization um, take place when um, within the party itself uh, when it comes to solving some of the issues that they are currently having within the ANC? Well, I think ANC, if we can recall, as I'm saying that to the Bluefontein Conference, that elective conference that elected the president for the second time, 
had, had said that it took a policy that says anybody that want to take a matter to court to resolve dispute of the ANC in, in, via court should themselves in actual be expelled from the ANC. That, that there are processes within the organizations that you resolve the differences that you have. Now, among other processes, I believe that if you have five regions who are voicing out a discontent with the manner in which a person is being assigned to it, that they feel that this deployee does not serve the Western Cape ANC well, so therefore you should be removed. Now, criminalization is something else. If you have criminal activities performed by individuals or performed by members of the ANC, there's no question about it that there's a criminal processes in which you should lay those charges and it should be handled that. There are certain conferences that you would have members of the ANC coming with pangas. You'll have members of the ANC coming with stones, have members of the ANC coming to disrupt a democratic processes. Now, you therefore need to lay charges against those individuals and deal with them in a criminal sector, in this instance, in a criminal court. Now, with those that would want to always challenge the decision of the ANC and elective processes or a democratic process via courts, I think the ANC has gotten a policy in which says we will deal them in this fashion. Among the other resolutions that they took, if I were to recall in that bullock one, was that members who would consistently take or rather take ANC to court would automatically expel themselves. You've got a process in which you need to handle and the processes are there. They are there within the constitution of the ANC. It's easy for you to deal with matters of the ANC. Within. It's a democratic process. The problem you would have is that when people are outnumbered mm -hmm. and they no longer have that majority, mm -hmm. they sort to other mechanisms. Mm -hmm. They would go, as, as, as Mr. Mwilo will say, they'll go to social media, they'll go to defame the ANC, create a different opinions, and, and so forth. They are individuals. They are not a number. Politics and the ANC politics is a numbers game. A numbers game is a reflection of democracy. It doesn't have to be that I am I'm because I differ with you and my thinking, I therefore think it's better than yours. Therefore, it should be the only thinking that prevails. No, it should be voted for. Mm. That's why it's called democracy. It's always and will always be a numbers game. That's why it's politics. Mm, all right. Unfortunately, I have run out of time, gentlemen, but thank you so much for coming through um, and giving me more details on this uh, issue that we're talking about. Uh, that was political analyst Tibuzang Muila joining us in studio as well as Musiri Ziyane, South African uh, Liberty Foundation, just giving us some more details as we know that uh, there's a split wide open uh, within the Western Cape ANC and uh, uh, regional structures blame the provincial leadership uh, which is um, Derek Anakom for dividing uh, the party and disbanding uh, branches.